Thank you. Welcome to the January 25th, 2018 meeting of the Little Rock Planning Commission. Uh, before we get started on the consent agenda, I would like to recognize uh, current uh, board of directors, uh, city directors and former city directors. We have with us city director Joan Adcock and B.J. Wyrick and Irma Hendricks and former city director Johnny Pugh. Did I miss anybody? I've never seen so many directors in, in our room, but it's always good to have visitors. So uh, uh, just want to wish you a welcome. And with that, uh, want to call roll? Chairman Barry. Here. Vice Chair Latour. Here. Commissioner Bynum. Here. Commissioner Cox. Here. Commissioner Finney. Commissioner Hamilton. Here. Commissioner Hay Haynes. Here. Commissioner Leahy. Here. Commissioner May. Here. Commissioner Stebbins. Here. And Commissioner Thomas. Here. You have a quorum. Great. Thank you. Uh, do I hear a motion for the minutes from the December 14th meeting? Oh, I move the minutes of the uh, December meeting be approved. Do a second. I'll second. We have a motion to approve the minutes of the December 14th, 2017 meeting. It's been seconded. Those approve, raise your hand. Those who do not approve, minutes pass. Okay, Monty, would you like to do the consent agenda, please? Okay. Following is a consent agenda for the Little Rock Planning Commission Planning Rezoning Conditional Use Hearing of January 25th, 2018. The, all of the following items are on consent approval. First is item A, file number G25221, Chenal Heights Circle Street name change to Chenal Village Drive. The required notification was completed and staff recommends approval of the street name change application. Item number one, G23468, unnamed street right-of-way abandonment west of South University Avenue and south of Midtown Avenue. Staff recommends approval of the request to abandon the 50-foot wide unnamed street right-of-way running south of Midtown Avenue, approximately 639 feet west of South University Avenue, and no portion of the right-of-way will be retained as an easement. Item number two, Z6555B, a rezoning from I-2 and PID to O-2, southwest corner of Mableville Pike and Mableville Circle. Staff recommends approval of the requested O-2 rezoning. Item number four, Z9297, a rezoning from R-2 to R-4, 1917 Wilson Road, 10120 West 20th Street. Staff recommends approval of the requested R-4 rezoning. Item number five, Z9298, a rezoning from R2 to I2, 8420 Scott Hamilton Drive. Staff recommends approval of the requested I2 rezoning. Item number six, Z8757B, St. Luke United Methodist Church Daycare, revised conditional use permit, 6401 West 32nd Street. Staff recommends approval of the revised CUP subject to compliance with all comments and conditions from the original CUP approval, which was file Z8757A. Item number 10, Z9293, J. Carmen, General Professional Office, Conditional Use Permit, 523 E6th Street. Staff recommends approval of the requested CUP subject to compliance with the following conditions. Compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in sections five and six of the agenda staff report and the CUP is approved only for this applicant and her business as proposed in this application. Staff also recommends approval of the requested variance to allow use of the existing gravel parking area subject to that parking area being maintained in a manner that does not result in the creation of dust, mud, silt, or standing water. Item number 11, Z9294, 4112A Street Duplex Conditional Use Permit. 4112A Street. Staff recommends approval of the requested CUP subject to compliance with the comments outlined in Section 6 of the Agenda Staff Report. And item number 12, Z9295, Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church and Private School Conditional Use Permit, 2400 Maple Street. Staff recommends approval of the CUP to allow a 40-student private school subject to compliance with the following conditions. Compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in Sections 4, 5, and 6 of the Agenda Staff Report. Dumpster service hours are to be limited to Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. And all site lighting is to be low level and directional, shielded downward and into the site. That concludes the consent agenda. Thank you, Monty. 
Uh, does anyone need to recuse on any of these items that are on consent agenda? You're right. So, given that, I hear a motion for the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the consent agenda, including all staff comments, conditions, and recommendations therein. Thank you. Do we hear a second? I'll second. Okay. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda as read with all staff recommendations and uh, conditions, and uh, it's been seconded. Those approve, raise your hand. Those who do not approve, okay. Consent agenda. Those items that were read, if you are an applicant or here of interest, uh, you're welcome uh, to be excused. Certainly welcome to stay. Uh, we're going to transition to the regular agenda, which will consist of items 3, 7, 8, 9, and 13. And while people are excusing themselves, I'd, for those who are here for items 7 and 8, I'll be thinking about uh, there's a 20-minute limit for each side. And I have a quite a number of cards on item seven and number eight. So if you want to designate someone to speak instead of you, uh, be sure to. But we, there is, a, for, for the courtesy, uh, for everyone else who wishes to speak, we do have a 20-minute limit on each item. Having said that, why don't we start with item number three, Monty? Item number three, file number Z9296. It's probably located at 63, within the 6300 block of South University Avenue on the west side of South University. Property owned by William G. Reich. The applicant is Abdullah Al-Maliki. William G. Reich, owner of this 6400th of an acre property located in the 6300 block of South University Avenue on the west side, is requesting to rezone the property from C3 General Commercial District and C4 Open Display District to C4 Open Display District. The property is located on the west side of South University Avenue, approximately 400 feet north of West 65th Street and Hindman Parkway. The south 40% of the property is currently zoned C3, with the northern portion being zoned C3, or C4 on the south 40%. The north portion is being zoned C3. The applicant is requesting that the entire property be zoned to C4 to allow the development of a used auto sales business. The property backs up to Mabelville Pike. The property is currently undeveloped, mostly grass covered. The overall property is relatively flat. A portion of the of one of the driveways which serve the, the branch bank facility located immediately to the south is located on this property at its southwest corner. The driveway is located within a common access easement. The property is located in an area of mixed uses and zoning along South University Avenue. Mixed commercial uses, including motels, convenience stores, and auto-related uses, are located to the north and east on the property, on property predominantly zoned C4 and I2. A branch bank facility, car wash, and grocery store are among mixed commercial uses located to the south on property zone C4 and C3. A church facility is located across Mayville Pike to the west. Single-family homes and, a, and an elementary school are located further west with a funeral home to the southwest. The city's future land use plan designates this property as commercial. The requested C4 zoning does not require a change to the land use plan. Staff is supportive of the requested C4 rezoning. Staff views the request as reasonable. The C4 zoning represents a continuation of the zoning pattern along South University Avenue. Approximately 40% of this subject property is currently zoned C4. The property located immediately to the south and properties located immediately to the north are zoned I-2 and C-4. Additionally, there are a number of auto-related uses, auto repair and auto sales, etc., within this general area along the South University corridor. Any new development of this property will be required to comply with all ordinance requirements, including building setbacks, paved parking, landscape, landscaping buffers, etc. Staff believes the requested C-4 rezoning will have no adverse impact on the adjacent properties or the general area. Staff recommends approval of the requested C4 rezoning. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Could you approach the lectern and state your name? Yes, sir. My name is Abdullah al-Maliki. Okay. Uh, you don't uh, you're welcome to make a presentation now. There's only one card in opposition to this. If you're, wel you're welcome to, to listen to his concern and then come back up and, and respond to that if you would like. Sure. That'd be okay? Yes. All right. 
Steve, Stephen Mann. We are opposed to any more car lots on South University, period. Not just my neighborhood association, but all the other neighborhood associations, presidents that we've talked about, there is getting to be way too many used car lots. You can't blink your eyes twice on South University going towards Colonel Glenn that you don't see used car lots sitting there. We would much rather see something more constructive sitting in that property rather than a bunch of junky cars sitting there waiting for somebody to come and buy them or getting repoed and put back on the lot so you got junk sitting there. That's exactly what it would turn out being. We do not need another used car lot in our neighborhood areas. That's our opinion. Okay. Thank you. The applicant, would you like to get up and uh, speak to your application, please, and those concerns? Yes, uh, so, uh, well, I don't, uh, I have already used Carlotte on Mabelville Pike. Uh, this will be the second one, and we haven't dealt with any repos or any junk or any kind of that stuff. I mean, and uh, the South University Avenue is the place that uh, people of, uh, uh, of Little Rock and North Little Rock and all surrounding areas come to buy used cars. So this is, this is the uh, place that we want to open our business there and it will probably be our second one. So I don't think we will be, I don't believe we will be doing any junk or anything as uh, the opposer said so I, or anything like of that kind. Thank you for the comments. Um, commissioners, comments, questions? I do have a question of, of staff. It's uh, part of this property is already zone C4, and the other one's zone C3. Is, is uh, used car sales already allowed on C4 by right? That's correct. C4 uh, does okay. allow auto sales, but uh, that is a permitted use. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Okay, no. You'll make a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move for the approval of this item, including all staff comments and conditions. Here a second. This item's been uh, moved to be approved as written with staff recommendations and has been seconded. Those approve of this item, raise your hand. And those opposed? Item passes. Okay, we're going to move on to item number seven. Just want you to keep in mind the 20 minute limit on uh, comments from the opposition, and I'm sure you'll agree that's a good way to do that. So, uh, with that, we're going to switch chairs here, and Dana Carney from planning will present these next two items. Chairman, members of the commission, the next item is item number seven, file number Z9290, Agnew Modular Home Conditional Use Permit. Conditional use permit is requested to allow for placement of a modular building on this R3 zone property to be used as a single family residence. Uh, the applicant has uh, acquired this structure, I believe it was formerly located on a school property, uh, modular building. Uh, consisting of uh, multiple modular sections that were joined together and used for classroom spaces. The applicant has acquired the, uh, uh, the building, the, the modules, and has brought it onto his uh, property. He, uh, he did that without uh, receiving approval uh, from the city. Once he was notified, he did file for this conditional use permit application. Uh, the applicant proposes to understall underpinning and do some exterior remodeling of the structure once it's connected together. There are wall-mounted air conditioning unit un uh, on the side of the structure that will be covered by a, a faux bay window. Porches will be installed on the front and rear of the structure and fencing placed on the perimeter of the site. In the uh, 
the analysis that was presented to the commission, we indicated the structure is uh, a flat roof structure. It's not quite a flat roof structure. It does have some uh, minor pitch to the roof. The applicant is going to expound further on uh, some changes he's proposing to make to the roof of the structure. We also indicated the current siding of the structure is not compatible with the homes in the area, which typically have a horizontal uh, lap siding or brick. Uh, <coughs> pardon me, the applicant is also going to expound some on his plans to make exterior changes to the structure. A driveway will be placed uh, near the rear of the structure off of West 26th Street. The applicant also owns the property extending to the west. He's proposing to uh, place a driveway with uh, some parking and uh, garage structure on that property. This is permissible. Uh, the lots will then be considered a single zoning lot, and so we can allow that to happen. The, uh, the structure itself, uh, in staff's opinion, is not compatible with the neighborhood. The homes in the neighborhood are generally smaller 1940s era uh, bungalow type structures. Uh, as I mentioned, they have the, uh, typically a horizontal uh, siding or brick exterior with a porch. The homes typically are 11, 1200 square feet at the most. And the uh, uh, design of the applicant's proposed new home we feel is not compatible with those existing homes. Now there are two other uh, larger homes located over off of Brown Street uh, to the north and south of 26th Street. Those homes are brick structures typical of uh, what you think of for single large single family homes. The modules uh, in staff's opinion when joined together will still have the appearance of a non-residential modular building. We don't believe again that the proposed use is compatible with the neighborhood. When the Planning Commission reviews a conditional use permit application, the Commission is to review the use's compatibility with the area and specific uh, treatment of any amenities to provided to protect the integrity of the neighborhood. Uh, the Commission is to determine whether the proposed use is compatible with and will not adversely impact other properties in the area where the home is, or in this case, the home is proposed to be located. Staff recommends denial of the application. Thank you, Dana. Is the applicant here, please? Would you get, uh, state your name and uh, welcome to make your presentation, and then you can yield time to hear opposition from those here and uh, speak to that later. Yes, sir. Okay. My name is Aaron Agnew, and uh, you said I can speak to the opposition as well later. Yes. You, but you can make your <coughs> presentation now, too, if you wish to. Yes, sir. Um, these buildings that uh, I have acquired was actually uh, belonged to Little Rock Christian Academy and they were getting ready to crush the buildings to build a new athletic center. Um, they allowed me to have the buildings if I can have them moved off of their property. Um, when they allowed me to do that, they gave me a week to have it moved or they would crush it. I actually didn't know that I couldn't move it on the property. But uh, I did have it moved on the property, and I was talking to Monty Moore about the situation uh, before I had it moved. And the day I had it moved, I went and spoke to him about it. Um, then the city arrived the day I had it moved with a citation, and um, I went straight down and filled out my application and turned in my application for the conditional use permit, and they accepted it. Um, I did uh, have a sketch drawn up by my architect, John McMorrin from Lewis and Associates. If I can uh, pass it on and we'll, we'll look at it. This is a residential home and will only be used for single family residential use. My wife and seven children are here. And uh, I come from a family of 14. I'm number 13 of 14 children. And I don't know how many I will have. But this home is uh, large enough for me and my family to live in. We also will be moving my mother in with me. My father passed in 2016, and my mother is a widow, and we'll be moving my mother in to take care of her as well. Um, she will actually be living on the front side, the front 2,000 square feet of the property that's facing Alice Street. Me and my family will have the back 4,000 square feet 
facing the alley uh, facing Brown Street. Um, this property was acquired by us in 2013. There were four houses, uh, one on Alice Street, three on Brown Street. The houses were abandoned houses where the wood was taken off of the houses um, frequently and there were drug addicts living in these abandoned houses. There were shootouts in these houses more than one time. We came in, we tore those houses down, the grass was grown over, there were trees all over the lot, and we came and cleaned the lot up. And so the lot has been sitting since 2013. We did have plans to build our family home there. We've been living on the campus of Word of Outreach Christian Center uh, for the past uh, 2010, past eight years now. And uh, we were planning to build our own family home there. Um, before I moved to Little Rock, I was living in Springdale, Arkansas, where we had a modern home that was built in uh, 2006. We bought it brand new. It was a 2,000 square foot home. When I moved here, my plans were to move and stay here in Little Rock where I was born and raised. Uh, this house will not be anything different from uh, any of the houses in the community, as you can see on the picture. We will put siding on the house. There is another roof. It's a double roof, actually, but the roof had to be rolled up and taken off to be able to transport the buildings. That roof will be applied back to the building, and the roof will be um, put back the way it is. So that's the only thing, and the underpinning, we will put underpinning on it, so it's going to look like most of the houses in the community, except it's going to be larger. Thank you. Yes, sir. I did have one card for this application. I just thought I'd, I'd uh, what's that? Number two card for for Dowell Evans. Who's Dowell Evans? That's one. This is number two. Oh, okay. Come on, bring the card up. Dowell Evans. Yes, I'm for the Agnew Family Project, and I have property just right down the street on. 2620 Johnson and I have been in this neighborhood well quite probably several years ago but I'm planning on probably my wife and I to move into this area to help bring the area into a more conducive for family usage I have worked with other communities like in College Station I worked there in that community to help bring that community with landscaping and different things and getting control or environment where children can have a safe environment to grow up in. But I'm also will be assisting the Agnews in, on this project. I do volunteer many, many hours a month with different projects, but I will be volunteering with the Agnews on this project from start to finish. And I use all the skills that I have, my time, my talent, and I'll also be using my pocket also to help this family come in this community because I think families are the fabric of communities. We have good strong families. I think we have good strong communities. I'll, we almost should pay these people to come. I have found out over the past year that working in communities that had problems, the family was the solution to the community. When the family came in, my family came into College Station as a family unit, strong family unit, and stood for family values in that community. So drugs and children and have not a safe place to play, it was going to be a war on. So the war was on. But the family I'm thinking for this community would be the best thing to ever happen to this community, to have this family come and set their stakes down in this community, and we'll have a lot to fight for. And we're willing and ready to do just that for this family. Thank you, Mr. Evans. I have a, a card from Mr. Robert Smith, is that correct? Yes, sir. And while he's coming up, I think I saw another gentleman. Would you like to have a green card to fill out, and you too? Okay, I'll see if I can find him. If I can, I'll just call your name, okay? Thank you, um, each one of you. And um, my name is Robert Smith. My address is 2600 Brown Street, and we've been in the community since 1988. We moved on Asher. Uh, in, in an abandoned building that had been abandoned at 3300 Asher Avenue. The apartment buildings on each side were abandoned for years, vagrant, vagrants, drug addicts, the gang wars, everything was going on. Uh, Brown Street from Asher to Roosevelt 
was prostitution lane, the drugs, the shootouts, everything was going on. We'd been there, we walked the streets, uh, we renovated the facilities, we built the facility at 2505 Brown Street, that's a 5,600 square foot home, and it's not brick as on the report, it's wood and siding, it's not brick, any of that is brick. We built it almost 20 years ago. And the home that's 7,700 square feet across the street at 2605 is where I presently live, and the majority of it is not brick. It's siding. Sears put the siding on. It's partial brick in terms of what was there before, but we added 4,500 square feet of addition. And so uh, what's going to go across the street on Brown and Alice is to enhance the whole community. I mean, we've been fighting. The shootout's right next door. I went and picked up over 20-something shells of bullets right next door and really laboring for the past 30 years for Asher and Brown Street in that community. So I know that the Ag News is an addition that's going to bring some stability to that community. No doubt about it. He works with me in the ministry. I've been pastoring in Little Rock for 37 years, and we don't plan to go anywhere. Uh, people have come in and threatened to kill me. I said, if you do, you can't eat me. I'm still here. We'll be here. And so um, I know when you're do, doing things out of the ordinary, it seems strange. They asked me, why are you going to build 2505? We had to fight to build that house to prove that it will be a single-family dwelling. It's been that way ever since. And um, uh, where we are now, I'll just conclude that it's going to be uh, – something that will add value to everyone in the community. Uh, and I tell people in where I live, I said there, there are more than one Chanel. There are two. One in West Little Rock and one in the hood. I live where you live, but I don't live like you live. And we're not going anywhere. We'll be here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Okay, uh, two other cards for um, Mansell Twilly, Jr., Good evening, everybody. My name is Mansell Twilly. Uh, I'm an owner with my wife with Twilly Realty and Tri Construction. And uh, we've been building homes since 99. Uh, uh, we're good friends with uh, the ministry there on Ash Avenue with uh, Pastor Bishop Smith. And uh, so I'm here as a character re reference. Uh, we build houses all over Little Rock. And uh, so we know. Uh, you know, we know the market. My wife has been in real estate for 22 years, so we know the market. of. Uh, and in this area, um, what, the, what the Ag News are going to do is bring the area up. So I'm here as a character risk, uh, uh, witness to, um, to say that he's going to do what he said he would do. The house will look, um, um, a lot of people are confused about modular homes and they confuse them with trailers, but modular homes are actually built better than, than regular still, still, um, stick-built homes. They, they use two by sixes for, for, um, for the walls. Uh, they're much better built uh, products. So it's going to be a good product, and when they get through designing it, uh, it's going to look, it's going to bring the community up. And so I would urge you uh, not to hold back on this because they're coming in, they have the mindset that they want to bring the community up. Not very many people even want to come and live in these areas, but they do. Why? Because they have a mandate to bring the community up. So please, don't let uh, things that other people may have fears about, but they've proven it. With Bishop Smith, they bought that area over there, they've, they've taken a lot of houses that are around there, remodeled them, built them up. They've moved crime out. They've moved prostitution out. They've moved the drug situation out. And now they want to um, build them a place for them to live. So I encourage you, please, uh, allow them to do this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Twilley and uh, Jacqueline Twilley. Good afternoon, commissioners. Thank you for having me. Um, 
I am, as you said, Jacqueline Twilly with Twilly Realty. I've been in the business 22 years. And I just wanted to bring some, uh, you know, objective information about that particular area and the research that I looked at. Um, right now, that area, uh, the average price on houses, of course, are about $51,000, um, the sale price. Uh, you're looking at vacancy rates of about uh, 33 to 34%. Um, and most of that vacancy rate are abandoned homes that uh, where no one is living. <laughs> Uh, what I found in Little Rock is that it's done a great job of identifying problem areas and then bringing things that are new, new concepts, new smart kinds of development coming into areas that are challenged. And I'd like to uh, just talk about one of those I thought was really different, and I was a little challenged in accepting it myself, but I have, I'm a property manager also as, re as well as residential sales. This particular home, they were the boxcar. You guys probably know what I'm talking about, the boxcar property that you put money into. Uh, that's where you took the train boxcars, put them together. And those are different for the community. But I go over there because I have properties in that area that I ride by and I property manage. And those are cute houses. They're different, but they're cute. And they did sell. And I'm hoping they were profitable. Uh, for the community as well as for, uh, for uh, Little Rock in knowing that you could bring in a different style of home uh, and, and being able to provide housing uh, to individuals who need it. Um, that is the information that I have right now uh, for this area. I would hope that you would approve it. It is different, but give it an opportunity like you, you did for the other kinds of uh, development that you're doing in those crime infested um, areas or have been crime infested they're they're doing a lot of great things there so I'm hoping that you will approve this uh, project thank you for hearing me today thank you for your comments mrs. Twilling okay we have eight cards in opposition to this item uh, be mindful of the 20 minute limit but I think that should be enough time to give a uh, voice to concerns questions uh, so with that, we will start with Ruth Bell. I'm Ruth Bell. I'm with the League of Women Voters. And <clears throat> this applicant is being very creative in his approach to housing which I applaud him for, but unfortunately, it's the wrong place and perhaps the wrong time to be making the application where he is making it. In that particular area, that type of structure is inappropriate, and for that reason, we would ask you to turn down the application. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Sedalia Bowley? I'm sorry I didn't get that name right. Well, all right. Sedalia Goulet. Okay. Good evening, board, and everyone here. I oppose the the idea of the home. And the proposal is to connect six module trailers together to make a home at 2601, 2603, 2605, Brown Street, and 2600. Now, I said all of that because on the uh, information we got from the city, all those addresses was on that information. Uh, no matter what you say, it's a modular home. We have no, no desire to have it there. Um, the citizens in this neighborhood, they're here, and I appreciate you going to let them speak. Uh, we don't want that in our neighborhood. It's going to bring our property value down. And no matter how many homes you build, it's not going to stop drugs uh, prostitutes and none of that. So we ain't here about drugs, no way. We're here about the property, and we're here about the address and the modular homes. Now, according to the city, um, the ordinance number 36255-2 says that it's not zoned for that area. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. 
James Washington. Good afternoon, board. My name is James Washington, and I live at 2505 Brown Street, and I've been at this property for since 2005. And um, I also own the, the lot that's directly north of that property. And I was um, considering building a modular home on that property a few years ago. And I was um, told that, that if I did, and I was going to build it from the ground up. And I was told that that would degrade the value of my property. And so I, I was thinking about putting um, a duplex there. And I also was told that that would degrade the value of the property. I, the solution would be to build uh, some property from the ground up. So when I found, when I saw this, these structures on the lot that's directly south of my home, I, uh, and when I found out that they came from Little Rock Christian, I called up there and talked to Mr. Uh, Jim Fink, who um, let them have the, the properties. And he told me that, he, that they called those uh, building structure, structures modular homes. But he said they were prefabricated and put together on site, but he didn't know exactly what site code or building code that they were that they originated from. But if it was a manufactured home, it, it's built according, to, I know you know this, to HUD codes and regulated by the government, and it cannot be converted. So that was what my uh, objection to this modular home. I had firsthand experience and was told no, and then looking at these structures here, I'm not even sure if they're modular homes. And so he's going to try to put a modular home there. I don't see it uh, enhancing the property value at all. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Washington. Donald Mitchell. Uh, thank you, board, for allowing me to speak for a little bit. I've been living at uh, 2614 Alice for 40 years. And uh, I heard that what they said about bringing the neighborhood up and speaking to what uh, some of the other people that come in and who want to have that. And they say upgrading the neighborhood. Well, I got three kids with master degrees come out that neighborhood. So I don't see how bad that is. You know, I I mean most of our people in my neighborhood are, are vibrant people that have been building and continually do work around their house. That place makes our land and our property look destitute, having it. And our property is not destitute because we continue to work to improve our area. And so, no, I don't want it there. It's next door to me. It's an eyesore. I tried to have an open mind. Uh, Mr. Askew had a house there that was there for two or three years. Every time he got grass long, we continued to complain about it. And now this, and then he brought these trailers here. It's been a problem since this man acquired the property. So, no, I, I don't want to, I don't see it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Irma Hendricks, please. Okay. All right then. Uh, Robert Webb. How you doing, commis uh, commissioners and staff? I'm Robert Webb, community advocate, uh, CEO of uh, DB2 Developers. Um, I'm here. As, I'm here. I'm. I'm kind of. I'm. I'm. I'm kind of a little confused on this. But before I start, I just wanna. I just wanna tell a. Uh, Word of outreach, you know, we, we appreciate you coming into the community and, and doing some of the things you've done. But it's kind of disappointing when you, when you come before a board and you talk about the negatives of our community. And, and a lot of us here have done a lot of work within the community to make sure some of those issues are no longer prevalent. So it's kind of disappointing that we're here talking about that. But uh, as a community advocate, I want to make, make sure I stress the point that we're often talking about bringing our neighborhoods up. We're always talking about the economics of our neighborhood. And so if, you, if you're familiar with War One at all, in our area, our current income currently <clears throat> is $32,000 per the 2010 census, right? And t before the 2010 census, it was $24,000. We went, our, our ward extended all the way over to Fair Park, and we only increased by $7,000. Now, you ask yourself, why is that? Well, I believe it's two reasons. One is because, not to, not to poke fun at anybody, not to take shots at anybody, but when it comes to 
when it comes to thinking outside the box in our neighborhood, people are always willing to think outside the box in our neighborhood as if our neighborhood doesn't matter. So those things hurt our economics. People don't want to come into neighborhoods where you have people putting up trailers and calling them homes. Now, no matter how nice it looks, because I just haven't seen one yet that looks very nice. I, I'm, from, I'm from Little Rock. I live in that neighborhood, been there my whole life. My mother lives there. My grandmother before she passed. Um, I, I have another grandmother who lives there. Most of my family lives in this community. They do everything they can to keep their houses up, to take care of their homes. And I think this would be an injustice to give them an opportunity to bring in some trailers. Because again, it's all about perception when you want people to come into a community. As I said, I'm with DB2 developers and my partner Derek Harris will be up here shortly. We've been looking for the last six years, been looking to come up with a plan. I shouldn't say looking to come up with a plan. We've come up with a plan to redevelop our old neighborhoods. Um, my old neighborhood is south of Asher, well north of Asher. His neighborhood is south of Asher, actually where they're putting these, uh, where they're talking about putting these trailers. We've been acquiring property throughout that area in hopes of redeveloping it, <laughs> but allowing, allowing a set of trailers and, and to start that, to start that, um, <sighs> to, to start, a, to set a precedent that we can start putting trailers in neighborhoods, it doesn't, it doesn't help the cause that we're fighting for. As I said, a lot of us in this room live in these neighborhoods. We've been there all our lives. We're not asking you to do anything that's, that nobody else has asked you to do. But when you start to think about the economics of our community, right, those things are very important. We like to have quality restaurants. We like to have quality grocery stores. To get that, we've got to have quality rooftops. We can't have quality rooftops if you're willing to put things like this in our community. So we just ask you that if you will today to uh, not approve this measure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Webb. Tanya Berry Redden, please. I'm speaking on my parents, I'm Olivia and Theodore Berry. We've actually been in this neighborhood for probably 42 years. Um, we're actually against this. The trailers come into our neighborhood. They're, they talk about raising the property value. We look at it as a depreciation. My dad, he keeps the neighborhood clean. We, don't, we even purchased a lot that was empty across from where he lives so we could make sure we kept our neighborhood up. As far as the preacher talking about walking in the neighborhood, I've never seen him come over there to crime. I don't know about that. I was born and raised there. So with that being said, we're against it. We don't want the trailers in our neighborhood. If you want to put trailers in the neighborhood, go to the country. If not, build a house. Because actually, it's, it's bringing down our neighborhood. I hate to just drive by my mom's house and see those trailers sitting there in that lot. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Redden. Derek Harris. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm going to be brief. I don't want to reiterate a lot of things that... Uh, have been said or going to be said. I just want to make one point. Um, I'm here representing my, my folks who have been residents of the neighborhood for 40 some odd years. Uh, I grew up in the neighborhood as well, and I'm also a developer. Uh, but the issue here is not about family development. The issue is about the regard or disregard of the, the neighbor, the neighbors, and the integrity of the structures that exist there already. Uh, these proposed structures are industrial buildings. They're not houses. And they don't have any place in this neighborhood. And I just want the board to consider that when you cast your vote today. Thank you. Thank you. I just got a card from Gary Burnett. Burnett. Sorry, I didn't read that right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am a, a resident of 2520 Alice, about one house over from the empty lot. Um, I've been there my whole life. Like uh, Mr. Donald said, uh, he had three children with master's degrees, and I have 
just about every every child on their block has a college education, so it's not uh, deprived or trying to bring it up because families like your own uh, supported your children and brought them up. Um, like uh, Ms. Redden said, uh, Mr. Berry and all of the neighbors in the neighborhood know each other because we raised, they raised us up together and we take care of it as a whole. Even um, we have a community uh, picnic every year, so it's not like we don't know each other, know what's going on in the neighborhood. Uh, we just want to keep it nice and clean and not have modular homes. I did some research on it, looking at it. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a mobile home, but it's not a house because it's built inside. I'm sure you guys probably looked at this stuff before I, before we, uh, we had this meeting today. I am opposed to it. Um, I don't think it'll look very well in the neighborhood. Like uh, Ms. Red said, if you want to build a modular home, um, go to the, to, the, to the county or something like that and build it. I'm sure, uh, he wants to take care of his family. He found a piece of property, and he wants to live in a certain part of the city, but you can't go to Quapaw and put one up. Quapaw ain't no different from my neighborhood. We have standards and stuff that they have as well. Even though they may be historic, our neighborhood is historic to us, and it means a lot to us to keep it the way it is. Thank you. Thank you. These are all the cards I had in opposition. Did I overlook anyone that submitted a card? Uh, uh, what's your name? Riles. Riles? Come on up. Afternoon, commissioners. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm Howard Bryles, and back some time ago, I started a family, and I'm going to go back as far as 50 years. And I had a vacant lot, and I was going to take a double-wide mo mobile home, modular home, and put it on the lot. And I found out that if th this had uh, wheels under it, axles under it, it was not coded for neighborhoods. So we got to look at, is this coded for the city? That's one of the questions I want to ask. And then secondly, do you know what type of building inspection would these houses go through since they are not houses? And your duplexes are not code, not uh, allowed in the neighborhood. That's the question I have for, for, for the, and that's the reason I'm against it. Thank you, Mr. Browse. Okay, the applicant, Mr. Agney, would you like to get up and speak to um, any of the concerns raised, please? Thank you again. Very exciting to me. You know, um, as I said before, my father went to be with the Lord in 2016. He would be 90 years old if he was here today. Um, I actually grew up in a modular home, 2218 East 10th Street, Little Rock, Arkansas. The house is still there, still standing, and um, it's amazing to me some of the things that I heard from some of the neighbors. I asked the city could I put the houses together so they wouldn't look like they were, but they told me that that was not um, possible, that I couldn't do that. And I know it's an eyesore, it's an eyesore to me. But what's so amazing is that I've been back to Little Rock only eight years, and I've been in this neighborhood. I moved from a, a quite a affluent neighborhood, and um, when I moved back to Little Rock, it was to serve the Lord in Little Rock, Arkansas, and to be closer to my parents. And it's amazing that um, I chose an area to live in where I believe the Lord wants me to be, where uh, someone said they didn't see the crime or hear the crime. Um, I hear shooting almost every night. A week doesn't go by when I don't hear shooting. And I chose to train my children in this community. I also direct the Word of Outreach Christian Academy. And I walk this neighborhood daily. And another amazing thing is I don't see these neighbors outdoors. And the children who have degrees, I don't see them outdoors. 
But I do see a lot of houses in our community with motors sitting in the yard, old cars sitting in the yard, people out smoking marijuana, sitting down playing dominoes and spades. And I have to walk my children by this on a daily basis. And I teach children on a daily basis. And for the neighbors to get up and say what they're saying concerning this home that we're putting here, um, I can tell that they're not really concerned with too much about the neighborhood. Because the neighborhood is not about the houses, it's about the families, like one gentleman got up and said. They really don't care about families at all. Because how can you care about a family and say, well, we don't want that type of house in this community? Like someone said, the house was built in another building, and it's more up to code than most of the stick-built houses. I was told if I would have taken these buildings apart, it would have been steel, two by sixes, two by tens, and two by eights laying on the ground. If I would have did that and laid a foundation, a concrete foundation, and built it from the ground up, we wouldn't even have this conversation. But because of the out exterior of the buildings and the way they look, the way they were brought to the property, you have a lot of people who don't have a lot of information about module homes. I hear people calling them trailers, mobile homes. As a matter of fact, there was a trailer put right on the corner of Asher and Alice Street. It's on the um, southwest corner of Asher and Alice. That home was a trailer. And the man told me himself he moved it from John Barrow, put it there, and bricked the house around. Again, Philander Smith College has put up modulars right on Chester. Beautiful modules right across the street from the Dunbar Community Center. And when I was told that those were modules, exact modules the way that mine is there, because the man that put them there came to my property and told me that they were the exact same thing. I went to look at them myself. And I said, this is amazing that people will be fighting, but they don't know. So I'm just, I just wanted to get up. I'm really excited, uh, my excitement, because uh, I just a scripture I remember that if God be for you, who can be against you? And I'm just excited about that. But uh, this property we acquired, and I remembered when I bought the property, when I bought it, the property was messed up. Since I had it, I've been cutting the, the yard personally with a, a grasshopper lawnmower that I own. And I clean up, I come around and pick up the trash on the property myself. And for it to be said that since I bought the property, the property was messed up. The property was messed up before I bought it. It was 36 trees that I had cut down. The reason I had the trees cut down is because it was so grown over that I knew it was going to be a problem. The entire alley could not be driven through. We spent our own personal money. I spent over $70,000 to clean that land up. I called to try to get tax credits. I couldn't get one penny of tax credits with over $70,000 just to clean it up. And I have all the receipts to prove it. And then we have people who want to talk about the neighborhood and how good it is and how I'm bringing something that's going to bring the value of the property down. So I just wanted to get up and talk about my excitement because it's amazing to me that maybe some of these parents don't understand that some of their children are not coming home in the very neighborhood that they raised them in. They don't want to come to the neighborhood, but I've chosen to bring my family there. So I just wanted to ask you all to consider this, and uh, God bless you all. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Agnew. Um, I'll throw another card. Do we have any commissioners' comments, questions, staff? May I have a few? Hey. May I come to this? Yes, City Director. I didn't. I didn't realize you wanted to, to speak. I think I'd better. Irma Hendricks, oh, and I am one one director. I think all of you all know that. And I cannot sit there and go along with what I've heard. I support the trailer. I think if any of these people know me, they know that I stand for what's right. And I think that an exception could be made to allow this young man, and, and he, to me he's a challenge for those persons that came and spoke before him. When you look at his age, what he's doing, 
He's not a person that's been out in the streets. And I can witness as a board member that area may be coming back up, but it's just as bad as the South End. We have the, because I get the calls instead of the chief of police when gunshots are heard within the community. So I'm just trusting and hoping that you all will, and this is a young man, a young black man that's trying to do something. And I always say to some of the people in the community, why is it always, this is almost like the black on black crime that we see in the streets, shooting each other, okay? That's all I support the property. Thank you, City Director. Okay, other commissioners? Commissioner okay. Hamilton, please. Just want to make some comments. Um, I absolutely applaud the uh, objective and intent that the uh, church and the organization and the uh, you know the folks that have spoke. Uh, what the objective here is, I think it's the right thing to do, uh, particularly with the challenges that we see in many neighborhoods in our city. Um, I think we also have to look at the residents that have lived there, uh, the properties that are there, the nature of the neighborhood. So I think this can be achieved um, in many ways. I just don't think this particular structure plan is the right route. Um, I'm very familiar with modular construction. I'm actually a licensed builder in another state. So uh, I know exactly what you're looking at, what your, your intent is. I would encourage you to look at a different format, different structure is, is, is my fault to meet the intent and objective that you have for the neighborhood. I think you've got to consider what's being placed there, um, uh, what, what you're utilizing. And I think there are other str uh, strategies for, so for that reason alone, I will be a no vote. Uh, Mr. Agnew, um, do you mind taking the podium? I have a couple of questions. Uh, one would be, um, I believe your proposed structure that you want to put there, and uh, actually I guess I, I'm going to use the word convert into residential housing. Are you planning to break in this underpin, or is this going to be like a mobile home type underpinning? No, ma'am, it's going to be brick. Brick, Brick. And what is your time frame if, you know, this was approved to have this structure encapsulated to look more like a home? Well, uh, I was looking at having it look like a home already. No, I mean, you know, to uh, I, I'm, I'm in kind of in the same suggestion of the commission, the other commissioner that I think the opposition from the your neighbors, proposed neighbors or residents is because it is considered a module or modular home or trailer we'd like to say so that is you know very concerning for the neighbors and their property values and things of that nature and also for you wanting to upgrade the neighborhood and bring um, affordable housing there new housing so um, that's why I was asking yeah. what you know well the pro the buildings were placed there on the week mm -hmm. of December the 11th mm -hmm. and uh, I actually was planning to have it ready for an occupancy uh, by February the 1st. So we're not looking for an elongated process of, of doing anything. It doesn't take any time really to do the exterior part of it. The interior part would probably take uh, a month or two, but the exterior part will be done very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, like has been stated, some people in the house, I mean in, in the room that's going to be helping me with this, who's been in uh, not just construction, uh, Twilly Realty and, and construction company and others, like uh, Dow Evans, who has built homes in the past as well. So we have a lot of help with this. Okay. As well as Little Rock Christian Academy, who actually is supporting us in this effort. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's actually how I got my architect. So okay. all of this. And before, if I can say, before we put, I found out the value, before we put this on that property, um, the entire building was a 400, it was appraised for $450,000 for the building alone. Uh, the part that I took is at least $275,000 value. And so, uh, as I was saying before, if we just took everything off of it and laid the steel and the wood on the ground, built it from the ground up, it'll be the same thing. We're actually just using this particular structure that's already there for the steel. The steel is there. So that's what we, we were looking at, the steel and the wood that's already there, and we're just going to build it out. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner May. Just an observance, uh, Mr. Agnew, I wish my minister would say as good of things about 
me as they have about you, but I can only wish. <laughs> um, I think there's a middle ground here if you've got an architect, and I think from pictures we have just seen on the internet about the one that looks like a house, but underneath is a uh, actually a motor um, mobile home. I'd go back to my architect and see if there wouldn't be some way that you could make this look like a house. And there, there's a middle ground there. I'd like to see it done, but I don't think I can vote for it with your design because I always like to support the people that are already there. But you've got a great idea, and I admire what you're trying to do, but I think with an architect you could make this thing happen and make everybody happy. Thank you, Commissioner May. Other commissioners? Staff? No? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move on uh, agenda item Z9290. I move the approval of the item, including all staff comments and conditions, except, except the recommendation of denial. Okay. There's a motion been made. Has it been seconded, by the way? Second. Okay. Okay. The motion's been made for approval of this item in the application. Those approve of this item, raise your hand. Those who do not, raise your hand. The application does not pass. Okay. We're going to go to item number eight, please. Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, the next item is item number eight, file number Z9291, word of outreach, prayer garden, conditional use permit located at 2700 Brown Street, which is the southwest corner of 27th and Brown. Word of outreach ministry is requesting approval of a conditional use permit to allow for development of an open air prayer garden on this vacant R3 zoned lot. The house, which previously existed on the lot, was removed some time ago, leaving a small concrete slab. Uh, staff did allow the ministry to place a small 8 by 8 storage building on the slab to be used for storage of lawn maintenance equipment and the like. The proposed prayer garden will consist of a gazebo structure in several specific areas for reading, praying, or meditating. Each of the meditation areas will have a bench where persons can sit, Ground level speakers will be placed at each prayer or meditation area to play easy listening, uh, <coughs> easy listening music, which uh, is designed to be heard only upon entering the prayer garden and sitting at one of the benches. Several signs will be placed throughout the garden directing persons to various prayer stations such as love, temperance, pathway to joy, pathway to faith, and pathway to peace. Additional signage will be placed at the corners of the property, identifying it as the Throne of Grace Prayer Garden. Lighting will be placed throughout the property to illuminate the various signs. Additional lighting is provided to the site by existing street signs. The property will not be fenced. In addition to the storage of lawn maintenance equipment, the small storage building is proposed to contain the equipment for the music the applicant states a camera security system will be established so that activity at the garden can be monitored. The gazebo structure will be utilized by students of Word of Outreach Christian Center, their parents, and invited guests for various gatherings, fellowshipping, and corporate prayer. While staff is certainly supportive of Word of Outreach's desire to positively impact and improve the lives of persons in the community, we do have concerns with the specifics of this prayer garden use. The property is located in an area that has a substantial amount of transient foot traffic. Our concern is that this proposed open air, fully accessible garden could become a draw for loitering, which could negatively impact the adjacent residential neighborhood. 
The site, again, is unfenced and accessible 24 hours a day, illuminated throughout the night, and contains benches and a gazebo, all of which could contribute to a potential loitering problem. Staff does not believe the proposed camera monitoring of the site is sufficient to alleviate this concern. Staff does recommend denial of the application. Okay, thank you, staff. Uh, Mr. Agnew. Sorry, I didn't mean to catch you mid-child there. Well, back again. Eh. <laughs> I've been maintaining this property for a few years, and uh, it's, it's quite a task with the um, activity that goes on around it. So I'm just uh, in um, uh, support of this project because I know it's going to help to kind of keep a lot of the um, uh, hanging out on the property out, and it'll be less work for me and maintenance for sure. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Agnew. I also had a card at four, uh, Mr. Dowell Evans. I'm in support of it because I, I have property just right down the street, and my wife and I, we're considering uh, moving in this to community to uh, assist in things that need to be done and and the prayer garden I have done similar things in other communities such as College Station if you go through there now you will probably see landscaping you see vacant lots that were used to be vacant there uh, manicured now with scrubbery and things of that nature and and the uh, it's it's it's, a, it's better I mean those type of projects uh, they really enhanced the area and they, 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 they ward off a lots of things and I'm going to be partnering with them on this project. Uh, we will probably have put some kind of decorative fencing there to, to, make, to make it sure it's just have 50 criteria of just a nice calm place and clean to people can come and myself just walk down the street. And plus, I do monitor the community. I've been monitoring for about three or four years, walking in this area, picking up trash, cleaning up. And I, I see some of the things in the community that this prayer garden would, would really help us to, to bring things up with manicuring, things of that nature. So I'm, I'm really for it. Like I said, I, I'm no stranger to this kind of thing. I've done this before in a community that had lots of issues in college stations. So, but, but I really support this, and I'm going to be in on this project. I do landscaping also. And, and, and some of the people that may be against this, I would like to let you, let, let you know that this really will help the community in more than one way. And this is just a, a starting point to come in and to take vacant lots that were growing up in trash and manicure those lots and put things on them that could bring a little bit more character to the area. Thank you, Mr. Evans. I'm going to move to the cards. There are opposition of this application. Uh, a sedalia? Yes. Uh, yes, he'll be, yes, he'll have time to speak after these cards. Uh, is the app, that was the applicant. Okay. All right. That was not the applicant. I'm the applicant. You're the applicant. I'm so sorry. Would you like to get up and, and okay, okay. Sorry for my error. Sedalia? Yes, Mr. Berry. On behalf of the Blue Hill neighborhood, we oppose the prayer garden. Uh, the gentleman was, was reading off a lot of things that, uh, that the garden would, didn't have, that it should have in order to make it good for our neighborhood. But from, from our point of view, uh, where we live at in Goodwill neighborhood, you got the Compassion Center and you got Pulaski County Jail. Uh, when people get out of Pulaski County Jail, a lot of them don't have a ride and they come through our neighborhood. They trash our neighborhood. If you allow that prayer guard to be there, what's going to happen, people getting out of jail don't care about God, most of them. And they're going to come there, and they're going to stop, and they're going to hang out, and they're going to bring other traffic there. And it would be a place for them to meet, call other people, and it's going to be a mess. We already have a mess in our neighborhood. I live there. So 
We oppose it 100%. And unless you have security there 24-7, that'll be the only way it could work. You did. You, you spoke to the last item, but... Uh, uh, Okay, I will, I will get that in just a moment. Let me go through these cards here. I won't overlook you. Uh, Tanya, Barry Redden, did she already leave? Okay. And Derek Harris, you want to wait? Okay. Robert Webb. Again, how are you doing? I, I'm always supportive of anything positive in our neighborhood. Always supportive of anything positive. But uh, as the gentleman said earlier, there's a lot of traffic through our neighborhood, unfortunately. And again, we, if you look around, you see we have a lot of seniors. And I think it's important that we understand what we're doing in, in neighborhoods like ours. My mother's 67. Um, a lot of these people are the same age. Most of these people have been there most of their lives. I think it's important we think about some of the things we put in certain neighborhoods. Again, there were challenges in these neighborhoods before, and as I said, a lot of us in this audience have worked really hard to clean up some of the things in our community and, and, and to start adding new things, which, which at some point, that would be a great thing to have, but I think right now, that's not, we don't need that on the community right this minute. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Donald Mitchell, I think he may have left. Okay, um, the applicant would like to speak. Was it, was it uh, Mr. Washington? What was your name? Smith. Uh, applicant, would you want Mr. Smith to speak before you? Yes. Okay. Thank you again, board. Uh, uh, again, Robert Smith, 2600 Brown Street. And, and um, I, I know what goes on on Brown Street better than I know what goes on on Alice Street uh, since 1988. Um, and we know about drugs, prostitution, and all that, and we know about uh, the crime and all that good stuff. I had one biological daughter, and she was a police officer, and she was killed in the line of duty. So I, I'm hard on crime, and I support law enforcement. But for, twin, for, um, for 37 years, we have never not had a 6 a.m. prayer meeting Monday through Friday, rain, shine, sleek, or snow, we go. And we're on Asher every morning, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m., and we're praying. We're on our knees, and we're praying that God would bring change to the community. We have people from all over Little Rock come. They come from around the country. They come from other continents to be with us in prayer. We know prayer works, and it changed people as well as things. And for anyone not to want a prayer garden in anybody's community, to me, it's, it's, it's way out there. It's way out there. Um, so... I, I tell you, like the Apostle Paul, I rob other churches to do service in Little Rock. In 37 years, I've never had an anniversary. I don't demand a salary. I have to pray for my daily bread at Word of Outreach Christian Center. We started in our garage May 5th, 1981. And, um, and I'm a father and I'm a grandfather and I'm a great-grandfather. I'm in my 70s. And don't turn down, please, our, 
I, I, I beg of you, don't turn down a prayer garden. If any deals go down in the prayer garden, who's going to be there? We're going to be there. Not our neighbors. They're not going to be there. When the shootings went down, they were not around. When the former mayor asked me to march for crime in the city, uh, at that time I told the mayor I couldn't do it with him because he wanted to do it at 12 noon on a Saturday on Capitol. I said, you do it at 12 noon, I do it at 12 midnight on Asher, Brown, and Martin. We're going to march where the gangs are. We're going to march where the drugs are. And when, the, when all the gangs made national news, Governor Mike, Lieutenant Governor Mike Huckabee called me and asked me to pray over the Senate and the House joint meeting. I prayed over it. I gave them a scripture. And I told them what was about to happen. And immediately, the governor sitting was indicted. Huckabee became the governor, and I was his confidant for 12 years. We ain't playing in Little Rock. And I, and, I, and, I, and I understand, you know, longevity. I appreciate those that have been around a long time. But don't turn down a prayer garden. Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane in light of all the soldiers that were on their way. And the deal went down. But he had to pray. He had to get help from God. God sent an angel and touched him and strengthened him so he can be in more of an agony. And if we don't pray, I, I don't care who we are. I don't care how educated you. I, I got four degrees. I got a BA, ME, MA, and I got two PhDs. The BA is I've been born again. The MA, I'm more alive. PhD, I praise God daily. And, 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 and the second one is past having doubt. I don't doubt that God's going to bring this whole community where he wants it to be. Please don't turn down a prayer garden. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay. The applicant, uh, I'm so sorry I overlooked you earlier. Please come up and state your name and... Uh, God bless you. My name is Carolyn Ann Smith, and I'd like to say Carolyn Ann because Carolyn is a joyful, spirited person, and Ann is a gracious one. And I intend to be gracious in my presentation. I trust that you've had opportunity to breeze through and look at what I've had here. But in um, uh, 1980, I lived at 1808 Brown Street, and uh, Two and a half years prior to that, I was born again at 24 years old. I was strung out on drugs. I was a, a Valium prescribed, but I overdid it. I was a black Anna Nicole Smith, but God rescued me. My husband, not Bishop Smith, but my second husband was gunned down on our front porch at 1808 Brown Street. So I know the power of prayer and the benefit of prayer. So we were given this house because a dope dealer owned the house. He was broken in by the police and they tore the house down. So the house has been with us for about, I mean, the, the, the ground has been with us for about five years. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, we've been praying about what to do with it. We didn't want to put a building there. And so the Lord inspired us to put a prayer garden there with five benches, represent grace. And then each one of those benches represent a pathway. So what I wanted to share in light of your contentions is the people concerned about folks coming into the community, they're already there. This is a house, if you would pass it down, this is a house that's right next to the lot for the prayer garden. 
Since we've been there at the prayer garden, we're there every day working, getting the vision, organizing, looking at what it's supposed to be. The vagrants, people that used to hang out at this house that's been empty for as long as I've been on Asher Avenue since 1988. Those people have not done anything with that house. So people in the community that are drinking, doing drugs, they hang out there at that place right there. So Mr. Gooley, go ahead. If, if you come over there, you will see that the people hang out over there. But we come to please, make sure that the people don't be safe. Go ahead, talk to us. We come to make sure that the people don't feel good hanging out because there's something called Presence power. Your presence produces power that the devil has to flee. So the people that's doing drugs, prostitution, and all that kind of stuff, when we come on the scene, they flee. So we've come there to make a difference in the community. My husband has this coin called CMVP. You know what MVPs are? MVPs? What are they? Most valuable player. Well, we have what, what we call CMVPs, Christ Most Valuable Players. We're on a playing field that the devil has controlled with prostitute, gang violence, drugs, alcohol, vandalism. But we came and made things different because of our prayer ministry. If you pray, you can stay. If you fast, you can last. And with us, it's a must because we've been planted there in that community to make a difference. So I, I, I'm a little stirred up that my neighborhood association president Ms. Of, with goodwill, <laughs> goodwill, goodwill to all men, the people that get out of the jail, they need to come over there and get some goodwill, some prayer. The people that's walking around like they zombies from that uh, retirement home. Walking around like zombies. They need somebody to love them and care for them and pray for them and support them and help bring them out. A prostitute, Jacqueline, will you please come stand with me right now? I walk the streets with the prostitutes on Brown Street. I say, ain't nobody picking you up today because this woman with this long skirt, they ain't gonna want you. Now, Jacqueline, give your testimony, baby. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Leitner. I was on addicted to crack cocaine for about 25 years, and uh, nobody wanted to, anything to do with me. So uh, Pastor Agnew's sister brought me the word of outreach. That's when my life began to change. People prayed for me interceded for me, fasted for me, put clothes on my back, food in my mouth, and loved me until I could love myself. And today I'm clean and sober off of drugs. I've been set free, and I carry the same mission. I pray. I get up each morning. I pray, and I ask God to come go with me. And somehow, some way, he does just that. I get high today on him, and I don't have to get high on drugs anymore. Now, when we start going to the prayer garden, Mr. Goulet didn't know because he don't come around that way. Uh, what was going on when you had to go up there and clean up? Because those people sitting on that uh, carport, y'all yeah. see that carport over there? They had on those pictures. Well, I encountered a lady was doing drugs, and when I came out to talk to talk to her, she quickly got her stuff and she ran off. So I I witnessed a drug playing there but when we came on the scene on the property people start respecting us and wanted to help us and they was excited ma about ma it i appreciate all this but what does this have to do with like the security of the garden that's what okay the, i'll tell you about the I, security. I, I understand we, yeah. I, got, we, I got the sermon you got the okay we just, you got uh, the sermon we praise just, the lord okay we, we can move on we just need to, to concentrate okay now on your concerns your concern about the property uh bringing transients um, as Mr. Evans said, we will put a fence around there and we would be willing to put a gate and a lock and a time that people will be able to come at a certain hour. We, I did not want to close it off, but I would be willing to do that for the sake of what you all concerned with, the transient. 
And our presence there uh, daily would make a difference as well. The concern of the, um, the, the, the lottering, we have the other places that you see the lottering at the, um, the stores. The people are already lottering around there. But since we've been at the prayer garden every day working, we've seen a decrease. Okay? And the site is unfenced. We put a, 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 put a fence there. Um, the camera situation, we have ADT coming out, uh, I think, tomorrow to look at security system. Now, that's not going to prohibit the lottering, but if anybody wanted to come in to our little book, little eight by eight building to steal our tools and our sound equipment, uh, it'll go off. So that would be some security there as far as that concern. Um, the illumination through the night and the benches, as, as far as the, gaze the, the gazebo is concerned, we can make some adjustments there. Whatever you all suggest that we need to do in order to get the prayer, the throne of grace prayer garden accepted. Do you have any questions? Commissioners? Hi. Or any comments? Hi, I'm Commissioner Thomas. Um, you've addressed the security and the fencing, and you said proposed hours that the gate would be unlocked for the use of the prayer garden. Um, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> I think it's a good idea, actually. I would be in in support of it because, as you said, the people that do loiter and that are released from the neighboring um, city jail over there, if they wander up on you, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm in... I'm in support of it. I yeah. think there needs to be something positive in the neighborhood over there. At least allow the opportunity to try, not kind of, I guess, uh, project that it's just going to fail. I think it, the effort is should be applauded, actually. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Other commissioners or comments? Commissioner Latour. Yes, sir. I have to commend both both items seven and eight, the, the modular home and you guys. I can't support you. Thank you. But as Commissioner May said, I think if you put a little bit of more pizzazz, for lack of a better word, you may have a good project there. And if you come back here, I'll bet you it goes. And if you'd answer some of these questions that were asked, you know, you're gonna talk to ADT. Okay. No, I've already talked to ADT. They're coming out tomorrow. Refine your deal a little bit. I don't think anybody here is, uh, I'm not at all opposed to a prayer guard. I think it's a great idea. But I have a little problem with some of the unanswered questions that I think if you refine it a little bit. What unanswered questions do you have? A whole plethora of them. Uh, staff? Uh, Chairman Barry, um, there's um, a lot of items that she, the applicant has agreed to do on there that you know, is uh, starting to get to the point that, you know, if they want to modify this application and bring it back before staff to come back through the, the commission, we would recommend a deferral of this item yes. uh, to the next meeting so that we can work through some of these issues uh, so that we can present something instead of sitting here and trying to hash out something at this uh, commission meeting. I, I agree. We can't d design it on the fly here. Uh, and I think you've heard a desire to, to refine your proposal so it meets some concerns about security and things. Sure. Uh, so uh, do, do we or does the applicant ask for a deferral? We'll make a motion. Either the applicant or we as staff can request a deferral. Okay. Um. Yeah, uh, Ms. Smith, what would you like to do? I would like to do whatever you suggest, sir. Okay. okay. So, but based on the uh, the staff uh, suggestion, do we hear a motion for deferral? Oh, um, Commissioner May, I'm sorry. Well, I'm fear of any time voting against prayer bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost afraid to vote against you, oh. but I can't support it 
with it hanging out here, and I would suggest that you ask for a deferral and tell us what you've done, when it's going to operate, when the fence is going to be built, and so forth. But I'm afraid to vote against you, really. So, based upon Mr. Collins and uh, Mr. May, I'm asking this board to give me a deferral. And to that end, I move this project be deferred till the next meeting. Okay. Uh, now, will you uh, help uh, me? Excuse me, uh, Dana, what, to what date would that and be? Can you amend that motion to where it is deferred to the March 8th meeting, yes. not the next year? Sure, I really meant to say I, I move that this is deferred till the March 8th meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's that, too and that'd long. Be a motion. Well, that's the next time for these kind of applications, and that's the normal cycle. I think that'll give you enough time uh, that we'll talk with the neighbors too. So, uh, so we have a motion to, for a deferral until the March eighth meeting. Do I hear a second? Okay. All those in favor of that motion, raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Okay. I Thank, Thank you. you. Look forward to I'm seeing. I'm sorry for being a little fired That's up. That's okay. What's that? Uh, I had had this. I didn't know if y'all actually got that. We did. We did. Okay, because I was hearing questions about drinking everything. We, we got that. We're, that. Okay. We're, 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 we're past that, though. Thank you. Okay. We're on to, to not a, number nine, if you don't mind, staff. I got to go to the restaurant. <laughs> It is. Uh, I've been doing certain things at certain times so long in life. I just automatically. Yeah. Okay. Ready. All right. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, the next item is item number nine. File number Z9292, McVeigh, multi-sectional manufactured home, conditional use permit, property located at 13324 Colonel Glen. This R2 zoned one acre tract is located outside of the city limits but within the city's uh, zoning jurisdiction. A single wide manufactured home was located on the property for many years. In June of last year, uh, that home burned and was removed from the property. The property owners uh, recently placed a multi-sectional manufactured home on the property, placed in the location on the property where the single wide was previously located. A conditional use permit should have been obtained prior to placing the new home on the property. City staff became aware of the violation. Uh, we did issue a notice to the property owners and they subsequently filed this conditional use permit application to allow the home to remain on the property. <clears throat> As previously mentioned, the new home is placed on the property in the location occupied by the previous home. A septic system was in place and is being used for the new home. The new home is a 2005 model 28 by 66 foot two section structure. The home has a colored standing seam metal roof horizontal siding, a front porch. The site also contains a detached accessory structure which includes a two-car carport. Staff is supportive of this application. 
the property around uh, the site, including this property, is uh, generally rural in nature. It contains a variety of housing types, ranging from similarly sized one-story ranch homes to large multi-story estate type homes. This one-story ranch style home is similar in style and orientation to some other homes in the area. If approved, the home must be brought into compliance with the siting criteria of Section 36254D5, which include the requirements to remove all transport elements and to install underpinning with permanent materials. The requirement to dedicate right-of-way will require a substantially reduced front yard setback. It is highly unlikely that any actual physical widening of the roadway will occur in the near future. If deemed necessary at the time, the home can be moved back. Staff does recommend approval of the requested conditional use permit subject to compliance with the following conditions. First being compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in sections 5 and 6 of the agenda staff report. Second, compliance with the following citing criteria from Chapter 36, Section 36254D. First, a pitched roof of 3 and 12 or 14 degrees or greater. Removal of all transport elements. A permanent foundation. The exterior wall finished as to be compatible with the neighborhood. Orientation compatible with placement of adjacent structures. Underpinning with permanent materials. The home is to be multi-sectional and off-street parking per single-family dwelling standard. Additionally, staff recommends approval of the reduced front yard setback once the required right-of-way for Colonel Glen Road is dedicated. Thank you, staff. Is the applicant here, please? Would you like to approach the lectern, state your name, and make a, you don't have to make a presentation. There's only one card in opposition. You can wait to hear what the uh, concern is and respond to that. Good evening. <laughs> I'm Earl McVeigh, and I'm an applicant for. Uh, I didn't know that you wasn't supposed to move it in there, or I wouldn't have moved it. But uh, it's a lot nicer than a lot of homes out there. Uh, and uh, I don't live there, but uh, it'd be a rental, you know. So. That's about all I got to say. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have one card in opposition. Bobby Highfield. Um, nice to meet all of you. I live in the county, so I'm not usually down here. Uh, I am a neighbor to this house. There are only about eight houses in adjacent to this property. It is the only trailer in that area. Um, I've been there since 1980. And I looked at all the things you are going to have done, have to be done to this trailer. If he does all of this, it'll be more than he's done in the whole time he's on that property. I brought pictures of what the property looks like now. And it has looked this way since the fire back in June of last year. I have lived out there. I was on the fire department out there for 10 years, kept the books. And one concern about this piece of property is, as he says, it's rental property. And I went down to the county and got the number of police reports, 911 calls, to this piece of property. There are 54. Now, as a firefighter, I made lots of calls. I never know of a property out there that has had this many calls to it. Now, I know he didn't, he didn't make the calls, but it's the people that live in it. Now, it was a single small trailer, and it's my understanding he should not have been able to move in a bigger trailer than what was already there. He, it, the grass is not kept cut. The maintenance is not done on it, and our poor neighbors and us, we have to put up with the people who live there. Shootings 
There's been one man killed in the trailer that was there before. Two people burned up in the fire. Uh, you have to listen to them yelling, shooting guns. Now, that trailer is on an acre. It's got, it's got pasture on two sides. And it's got houses on the other side, houses across the street. And I've called the sheriff's office because they were shooting pistols down there on that property. And they said, well, you live in the county. I said, yeah. And they said, well, if they're shooting in a safe direction. Well, I wasn't going down there to see which direction they were shooting. But it was obviously they were target practicing shooting guns within, you know, view of other houses. It's, here's the police reports, and you can see there have been fires, domestic disturbances, oh, medical, just over and over and over. And my husband and I were already prepared to come down here and ask it to be declared a nuisance. And now that he's got a bigger trailer there, that means he can have more people there, and he doesn't live there. He comes by and collects the rent, or they mail it to him, but he doesn't see what the neighbors have to see. And all the rest of the people that live around there have been living there, you know, for years. And it's, it's a nuisance. It will lower our property value. If you can see, that carport has not even been touched. The trash all in it. And you can't see how high the grass gets because it's winter time. We just took those pictures a few days ago. Uh, I really, really hope you don't give him a variance and let him put that trailer in there. Because us neighbors, it, we don't have the police calls to the rest of the houses. Everybody that lives around there are family people. And it's our home. And we just don't need it. It was last week. We went by there and, and stopped and took them. But, I mean, there's no maintenance done to it in between renters. Uh, when they had the killing, they, the killing ha happened one night. And the next day, all the people that lived in that trailer, and they were all males, were gone, along with all the chickens or roosters or whatever they had in pens out back just psh, disappeared. But that's been the kind of people, I mean, that have lived there. When it was a, before he bought it, it was just a family home. But as rental property and with nobody seeing over it, it's awful. I hope you won't approve this because I have to live there. I have to listen to it. They come and knock on our doors. They come and ask for help for food, for, to borrow your phone, and it's just a nuisance. It's, it's the trailer and the people in it are. And with, he lives in another county, and so he doesn't see what goes home and what we have to live with. Okay. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Highfield. Mr. McVeigh, would you like to respond to anything? Well, a lot of it, she said, the roosters and chickens, they've never been none down there. Uh, and the way it looks, I was working, starting to work on it, and then uh, got the notification from the city, and I just quit on it. You know, I wasn't nobody even, I done spent a lot of money down there. Uh, so, uh, I don't see how I could be an eyesore down there. There's nobody around, even close. It's open space. And uh, so I don't see nothing she said that should change anything. Uh, okay. that, that, and as far as the place, it'll be cleaned up, you know. And uh, the all of them, sheriff calling was on the person lived there or it burnt. But uh, of 
course, you can't help what some of the renters do, you know. Uh, most of the time, it's just a couple fight. So, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Uh, other commissioners, comments, questions? Mr. May? Staff, um, back in my younger days and stupid days, I owned some rental property too. And we have code enforcement in the city. Is there any code enforcement? Because I would hate to live with this Mr. McVeigh, this is. property is located outside of the city limits, and there, and there is no, there is no code enforcement for the county. We have zoning and subdivision jurisdiction outside the city limits, but other city services are not currently extended outside the city limits. Well, we really, our board has nothing to, I feel your pain, but I don't know what we can do to help you. Well, uh, what he's doing is legal. I, I would hate to have him as a neighbor uh, like you, but... Uh, But I mean, I understand that and you've you've convinced me. I'm a I'm a follower. Thank you. Thank As you. The free previous, uh, I'll be praying for you. <laughs> other other commissioners, any comments, questions? Uh, I have a question. Um, staff, um, the proposed uh, items A through H that the the applicant has proposed to do, in what a lot of time will that be completed? Well, the the, uh, the structure complies with several of those already. It has mm -hmm. the pitched roof. It has the horizontal siding. The orientation is compatible. So mm -hmm. many of those it already complies with. Assuming it were, uh, if the application were approved by the commission, mm -hmm. um, I would advise the applicant not to do anything for at least the next 30 days, which is an appeal period in which, uh, in which the application could be appealed to the board. Uh, once any appeals are exhausted, we would expect that uh, improvements to be made within 30 days or so. If these are improvements that have been listed A through H, the the person that opposed it, would you be okay with that? If he, no, okay. Please, if you're going to speak, you have to come up to the mic. They can't get you when they record it. <laughs> it was my understanding when I first called in about it that he was not to su not supposed to have put in a trailer larger than the one that was already there. This is a lot larger trailer, which means he can put a lot more people in it. Okay. So that's that was y'all's rule, not yeah. ours. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion on case Z9292. I move for the approval of the item, including all staff recommendations and comments. Okay, we have a motion to approval this item. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay. Those approve this item application with staff recommendations, raise your hand. And those opposed? What was the count you had on that? You need to... Six to four. Six to four. Six, yay, and, and four. I thought I counted more than four opposed. Six, there were six in favor and four okay. opposed. Okay. Item passes. Why did you get those? Mm -hmm. Six to four. We'll proceed to item number 13. Thank you. 
right. Mr. Hey, Mr. Leahy, probably uh, uh, standard practices for uh, uh, those uh, connected with the applicant on this application uh, would need to excuse themselves from a room. It will be okay. You can, you can sit next door and listen. We'll miss your face. <laughs> okay. The item before you today is an advanced grading request at 10. 073 Man Road, file number LA0077. Uh, the location is on Man Road south, on the south side, just a little bit west of the Little Oaks Baseball Park, which is a private association, and they are the applicant, the Mabelville Youth Association. Uh, the application was prepared by Troy Leahy, and the area of the site is approximately 14.8 acres. Um, the current zoning of the land is R2, and the proposal request is for a variance of the land alteration regulations to harvest timber and advance grade the site uh, without imminent construction, meaning they're not ready to proceed with a proposed uh, future land use. Uh, the applicant is requesting this variance to harvest timber uh, located at the south side of Man Road. The property is approximately 14 acres in size, and the variance would allow the staff to issue a grading permit for a timber harvest without the imminent construction. No fill materials proposed to be removed or hauled from the site. The applicant uh, uh, at this time is not proposing any further construction other than to restore the site with grass following the uh, tree harvest activity. And uh, I believe also the grubbing and clearing of the roots uh, and tree stumps. The current property is relatively flat with dense trees. Uh, it was probably logged once long, long ago. Uh, surrounding zoning of this R2 property to the, uh, to, uh, to the east, there's a small industrial property near Man Road. And the remainder of it is a PDR that was approved by you not too long ago for the parks subdivision to plan residential development. Uh, to the west is R2 zone property and a home with uh, on a wooded acreage. To the south is an old farm that's accessed from Sardis Road. And also to the south is a uh, the, uh, the uh, ball field, the private ball field. Staff is at this time recommending approval of the advanced gra gra uh, grading request as currently amended. Uh, they do propose to leave uh, undisturbed buffer on the property uh, all around the sides of 50 feet. Uh, in addition, staff would recommend the following addition, additional conditions associated with this application if improved. If approved. So in addition to the uh, requirements of paragraph D, one, the limits of the land alteration temporary undisturbed buffers should be flagged prior to beginning any clearing and grubbing activities. The construction entrance should be designed to restrict views of the cleared area from Man Road and provide a gravel tracking pad adjacent to Man Road. A burn permit should be obtained from the Little Rock Fire Department prior to commencing any burning activities, a tree debris, and the last item, this approval is only for clearing and grubbing of the site. No other aspects of the site plan uh, were reviewed or are endorsed by this approval. Uh, the site plan should be reviewed at a later time associated with a future CUP application. Uh, and that's all I have on that item. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hood. Uh, the applicant would like to approach the lectern, please. Or what do you think? with the applicant. You're certainly welcome to make your presentation. There's one card in opposition, so however you'd like to. It could be me. Okay. I'm, I might be the applicant. Okay. Uh, I'm B.J. Wyrick. I live on Alexander Road in Mabelville, and um, the Mabelville uh, Youth Association is made up of uh, uh, several people in the community. Um, we're trying to bring back Little Oaks Ballpark, and um, it's been in a declined state for a while. Um, the ballpark actually did own this 15 acres at one time, but they quit paying on it, and so the Little Flower Knights of the Columbus uh, took it back. And so when we um, started bringing this park back together, we went to them, and 
they're letting us have the land for the back taxes which have been paid. So it's, um, I, I thought it was close to 15 acres and I think that's what Mr. Hood said. Our plans uh, in the future are to put soccer fields. There's a big need for soccer fields in Southwest Little Rock. And then to put some baseball um, locations to play baseball and a concession stand. Um, we're doing this advanced grading because we want to harvest the timber to uh, get the money to put back into the ballpark. Um, we have some partners that are helping us. Uh, Mabelville Methodist Church, which is about a block away from here, has, is one of our partners. And Arkansas Electric Co-op has partnered with us and given us some money. We're working on our 501c3. We've applied for it. We don't have it yet. We have a lot of people that are interested in bringing this park back. And um, I think once we get our 501c3, we'll, we'll start getting in some money. Our goal is to offer soccer and softball and baseball for the kids in Southwest Little Rock. Um, one of the reasons this park went in decline was uh, there was a person that was managing it and building super teams where he would travel all over the country and play ball. That's not what we want to do. We want to offer this type of activity for kids from four or five years old on up. I had two daughters that played at Little Oaks and they're 40 and 36. Now you know how old I am. Um, but it was a thrill to get them acclimated into team sports and play with other kids. And I could see one kid on one park or one ball field and another one on the other ball field. And it was a family atmosphere. Um, a lot of people in the community came out. We have really been surprised at the number of people that are really interested in bringing back this ballpark because uh, we've got out on Facebook and they've come out and said, bring this back, bring this back. So we're all really excited. Um, I have some board members here. Ronnie Dedman is our secretary. It's not a very good scribe, but yeah, he's our secretary. <laughs> Pam Edcock is on our board. Um, Joan Edcock is an advisor. Troy's uh, an advisor as well. He's also our engineer. We've had a lot of help getting this application to you from uh, Bill Spivey, who's our attorney, and Troy. If it wasn't for Troy, we probably would still be trying to figure out how to get it here. We're happy that the staff has um, uh, it's gone along with our application, and um, unless there's any questions from you all, I'd like to hear what the person that's not happy with it has to say. Okay. I had a card from uh, former Commissioner Adcock. I don't know if you wanted to say anything. I'll wait until he's ready. Okay. Okay. Then we have uh, Steve Mann. Well, basically, I'm against cutting trees for any reason. You take away from the wildlife, you don't take the environment into consideration. People seem to forget that them very important trees filter the air that we breathe. Not only that, you got wildlife that's involved there. It's an environmental impact on them. Nobody takes that into consideration. It's more, there's a soccer field, plenty of them. There's softball fields, plenty of them in Southwest Little Rock. They ain't privately owned, they belong to Parks and Rec. So we're, we're talking about somebody gets an enthusiasm, we want to do this, we want to expand this out, we want to take this property and strip it off for potential future use of another baseball field, another soccer field or two. Of course, they have to pay for that. The folks come and use it, I'm assuming it's not going to be a free ride for whoever decides they want to use it. But the environment... Every time we clean off a lot, we cut the trees, push them away, burn the stumps, build, put another concrete building up there, it infects, it affects our environment badly. Them mild summers we used to have are eat up with heat now because of the heat that gets into the concrete and the asphalt and all the other things that get there. I know these folks say, well, we're going to put grass down. Well, that doesn't substitute for what the trees do doesn't substitute for the wildlife you're going to interfere with. Kids need to learn about wildlife just like they need to learn about sports. So my objection is they need to do an environmental study before they just go out there and go to whacking everything out and pushing it down the street somewhere. Thank you very much. Former Commissioner Eckhart, please. I'm Pam Adcock, and I know this is a flip-flop for me because normally I'm the tree hugger. 
Uh, and in all my years, I've always fought tooth and nail for all the buffers that I could get for everybody. Uh, actually, my idea for this property was to leave no buffers and to come back and replant uh, more bushes and, and smaller trees, make it more prettier than leaving uh, just undisturbed buffers. I've got an undisturbed buffer between me and ATA, and it's it's horrible. Um, it's, it's just not worth it. Um, but in order to compromise, uh, we did agree to leave the buffer, and uh, as far as taking all the trees out, you can look at me and know that I don't play soccer, uh, but I do know enough about it to know that you can't leave trees in the middle of the field, uh, so therefore it has to be taken out. Uh, we'd appreciate your support. Uh, this is, every bit of this is, is coming out of our, our pockets and increasing our gray hair. Uh, no one on the board, uh, it's in our bylaws, no one's going to get paid for anything. Uh, so it's not a money-making project for any of us. It's strictly to get the kids in the community some positive activity and get them off the streets, and that's what they need. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adcock. Uh, Ronnie Dedman, please. Good evening, Commissioners. Ronnie Dedman. I live out in that area, uh, sitting on my couch just uh, right after, just right before Christmas, actually, got a phone call. And they said, uh, Ronnie, would you like to be on the board over at Little Oaks? Well, I've heard a lot of good things about Little Oaks, but I said, nope, I'm busy. And I was with what I do. And they said, come to a board meeting and hear what we're talking about, what we're planning on doing. And that's what I did. And once I did that and was very impressed at the effort that all these folks behind me have put forth, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll work with you guys. I'll, I'll be on the board with you. For me, um, you know, sports is about bringing people together, and, and it can do that. We need to give uh, the young people out in that area something positive to do. And that's sort of been my commitment here. I want to work with them and see if we can't bring Little Oaks back to what I heard that it used to be. You know, we get uh, young people off the streets, you give them something positive to do. So I'm uh, very much in favor of the effort put forth here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dedman. Uh, Director Robert, did you want to say anything? Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit about the surroundings on the east side of the property I know Mr. Hood talked about a uh, subdivision that's going in that you all approved a plat on not too long ago and along our eastern border that's going to be an open space so you know trees and all that stuff are going to be there um, our south border just a little bit past that is a city park called Moorhart Park and I met with the parks director just last week. He's trying to come up with a uh, conceptual plan or comprehensive plan for um, Moorhart Park to be played out in the next five years. And uh, one of the things that we see from Moorhart Park is the fact that there are so many trees there. And it's not welcoming. You know, the front part of it, it's got a few trees there, but you go into the back part of it, and uh, it gets kind of creepy back there. And families are just not going to, they're not going to enjoy something that they can't visibly be seen or see out. So they're going to come in and they're going to trim some of those trees out. They're going to raise the canopy um, within the next five years. Um, the other part of that is uh, when I talked to them about this land alteration thing that we were going to do, they, they actually came up the Little Rock Parks uh, developed our um, our conceptual plan that you saw up there, and they did not have a problem with us going ahead and doing this because they know if you have baseball fields and soccer fields, you gotta you gotta open it up. Uh, and of course, to the west of us is already Little Oaks. Um, there's some people that live along Main Road, and uh, with the advent of de developing this area. Um, 
we will actually clear up some drainage issues that they have today. Uh, we get a lot of runoff through that park from um, from this to this land from Moorhart Park. Parks don't worry about detention ponds and you know fast water and all that kind of stuff. So we, we kind of get dumped on by Moorhart Park, and it goes on down to the residences that are there. So they're excited about the potential of getting some of their drainage taken care of. Um, as Pam said, we're doing this because we want to we want to give an opportunity for the kids in Southwest Little Rock, from four on up, to uh, play ball, to uh, be involved in teams, um, to have some activity to do. We've already uh, had a workshop in May where we brought kids in um, to start teaching them how to play ball. So we're already making some movement in the existing park. Um, and the existing park, when it was ran correctly, there was enough money to keep that park going and also pay for this 14.8 acres uh, before it went defunct and um, <coughs> got into a bad situation. So um, we just got to get started with our plan. It's a good plan. Uh, a lot of people are excited about it. And uh, I would appreciate you all taking this into consideration and uh, approving this. Thank you. Thank you, Director Warwick. Okay, commissioners, comments, questions. Hearing none. Mr. Chairman, I move for the approval of this project, including all staff recommendations, comments, and conditions therein. Okay. We have a motion to approve the uh, application with staff recommendations and comments and conditions. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Okay. Have motion to approve. It's been seconded. Those approve of this item, raise your hand. And those who do not approve, item passes. Okay. Do we hear this is uh, citizens' communication? Anyone wish to say anything? If not, we stand adjourned. <laughs>